Come join me as we go and explore what was once a fantastic attraction here in Leeds. In this video, we're going to explore what remains of the miniature railway. If you would like to see the rest of the park remains, then check out part one. The Golden Acre Park Miniature Railway opened with the park in 1932. It initially opened with one locomotive on the tracks called Robin Hood. This was a steam outlined diesel hydraulic powered unit. The railway was built to circumnavigate the lake at just over a mile in length on an unusual 20 inch gauge track, the same as North Bay Railway in Scarborough. Most others at this time, including the Pleasure Beach and Butlins, would have been a 21 inch gauge. It had three stations along its route. Lakeside Station near the front of the park and its entrance. Wood End, which was located at the back of the park in the woodland, and Woodview on the opposite side of the lake. There is also mention of another station called Parkway, but we're not sure where this was located. The railway also had a signal box, engine shed, bridges, and various tunnels and viaducts along its route. Due to the popularity of the railway, another locomotive was ordered to keep up with the demand. The new second locomotive was named May Thompson, after the owner's wife. Both locomotives were made at Hudswell Clark of Hunslet, Leeds, the same as the locos at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, Butlins and Scarborough's North Bay Railway. With all three orders coming in around the same time period, Scarborough in 1931, Golden Acre in 1932 and the Pleasure Beach in 1933. The carriages on the line were open topped with bench type seating. A dining car was added in 1935. It cost sixpence for a round trip. When the park closed in 1938, the line sat in an abandoned state. The two locos and all parts were eventually sold to Blackpool Pleasure Beach, where they sat in storage for many years. The dining car is still at the Pleasure Beach today, along with some other railway wagons and props. The locos left the Pleasure Beach in 1953 to spend a long period at Morecambe Pleasure Park, also owned by the Pleasure Beach and the Thompson family, but not to be confused with the Thompsons at Golden Acre. The locomotives eventually ended up at Scarborough's North Bay in 2006, where both of them still exist and operate to this day. Robin Hood kept its name, but the May Thompson was renamed to Poseidon to fit with the nautical theme on their existing locos. Almost everything on this railway was removed and sold off, but in 2003, a few buried discoveries led to a recreation of a section of track, along with restoring a section of platform and many more things lay in wait for discovery. So let's get exploring and see what we can find of the original route. And then look at this that I've just stumbled upon now. But I did know this was here. This shows where the original miniature railway used to be. Now I do, I do know for sure that this track is not the original track. This is only done as a memorial of sorts to show where it used to run. I'm not sure about the sleepers, they could be original. So I do believe that a lot of this was covered over for many years and they had to restore it. You can see I'm stood where the track ends but would have continued straight on and made its way all the way around the back of the park and back around this way. But it's nice to see that they've kept it or restored it anyway, just to show what used to be here. It would be great, wouldn't it, if they could reopen this. I bet it'd be a popular attraction again today. Okay, so the whole time I've been here, I've been stating that this was the station and a lot of people online think that this was the station as well. It wasn't, I'm pretty sure of that. And I do have some compelling evidence, which I've just discovered right now, looking at an old picture. And I'll show you why. If we take a look at this picture, taken of the station and the platform, as you can see. And you look at those stairs in the bottom corner there, the bottom right hand side, and then pan back to today. That is those stairs right there. You can clearly see that three steps heading down and three steps right there. So this down here is the original station platform there, or the start of it anyway. And it would have headed along where that wall is now, or the hedge. That was the station platform there, and the track would have been where the hedge is, but a bit higher up. 
Again, like I said, the topography around here has changed so much. So let's get a closer look. I love it when we find evidence like this. So there is the platform edge, as you can see, the edge or the curbstone there. And the track, as you can see, would have headed through there, roughly where that hedge is. And this was just track bed. So right here now, we're looking at the station platform. And then the track would have followed the curve of the hedge and across the lake that way. So while I'm here now, that means I can now match up this photograph. And again, another before and after picture taken from here showing the Robin Hood engine, which is now at the North Bay Railway in Scarborough. And just behind it as well, I don't know if you can see, but there's a tree there. And today that tree doesn't exist, although it has just recently been cut down because you can actually see the roots of that or the base of it, but they've just pulled out this morning while I was here. And I'll show you that after this photo fade. And there is the base of that tree in the back of the picture. Either the one on the right or this one that they just pulled out this morning, as you can see. And also, let's take a look at this picture taken right here that shows an engine parked up on the line and a little passing loop. Also, with the bridge above it that connected to the water chute ride that was on my left. And you can see in the background, the old cafe building. Like I said, doesn't exist today. We have a new cafe today. And just a bit further down from the uh, replica track, you can see the old sleepers there as they head on. And they make their way all the way along here. And we've got an old wooden buffer stop just there. So I reckon that when the railway was filled in, these were still underneath. And there's probably many more continuing down there. So as we get to this section here, the miniature railway would have continued towards me just on the side of the lake. And you can see where this grass patch is on the left. That's where the miniature railway would have been roughly. Now, a lot of it was built on concrete as well and little uh, bridges. So it could have maybe been just on the edge of the lake here, but it did continue towards me and head on this way. And just on the left, somewhere down here was a, an engine shed, according to the old maps anyway. But it doesn't exist today, as you can see. And it would have been probably where the footpath is today, right next to the tracks. So all along here at the side would have been the miniature railway, just on the right-hand side of the footpath here. Absolutely nothing remaining at this section of that railway. But it does follow the original path and you can still see where it would have gone. And I bet it wouldn't cost much to restore that today. So you may remember when we did the Blackpool Pleasure Beach miniature railway and also the Scarborough North Bay Railway. This place was mentioned quite a few times. Now on this section, there's a bit of an incline as we head up here. And like I said, the miniature railway would have been on the right hand side there. I've never seen a miniature railway do much of an incline before, but it doesn't look much on the camera, but it is actually quite a steep incline that. And just as we get to here, I do believe this was the station for the miniature railway somewhere here. And it was known as, uh, or labelled as Wood End Station on the map. And I've got to guess, because of this wall, it was somewhere right here. Now, wouldn't it be great to get rid of all these brambles here and these chopped down trees? I'll tell you what, I would love to do some serious clearing up in here. I bet you'd find a lot more than you see today. Now, with regards to the miniature railway, I do believe it curved its way around, just like it does today. But it would have had to cross this at some point as well. And we know that that's the footpath there. So I'm pretty confident this is the old miniature railway bridge here. But I'm betting this is the foundation for the bridge for the miniature railway. And it would probably would have gone down the edge of the pathway here. You can see from this footage that the foundation I spotted was more likely this raised section here to cross the outfall. You can also see how high the water level is compared to today. The lake would have been much higher. 
or I could be totally off track, pardon the pun. This could have been the track bed here and the footpath over this one here, but this doesn't look like a proper footpath because it's too uneven. So it's hard to tell if this is the original footpath or if that was the original one. And then you would have had the miniature railway running alongside it. And again, as we make our way a bit further along, you can see an old edge of a wall here. I'm gonna get down on the side so you can see it. So a piece of wall there on this corner. Could the miniature railway have run down the side here? It would have been quite a steep drop on the side if it did. Or like I said, am I totally wrong? And this was the miniature railway track bed and the path down there was the footpath. It's hard to tell these days. And like I said, I've never been here before and there's not many pictures of this section. So I think I've got to change my mind and say that this is the track bed. You can see how flat it is and how it's not very wide either. And on the old map, it does show the track running in a straight line across this section. So I'm going to change my mind and say this is the track bed and that down there is the footpath. So I am going to change that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the track bed now. It's too narrow here. And if we just step down here, you can see another brook running through from the lake here. And also some red brick to support the walls at the side here. That to me smells of railway. So if this was the railway, then obviously this bridge is not original, but there would have been a bridge here spanning this second stream here. You can see the concrete foundations on either side there, which probably would have held the bridge supports. And again, the red brick on both sides there. We're now on the other side of the lake. I was following the footpath round, but then I just realized that this would have been underwater. So it definitely didn't run this way. And I've got a feeling, if you look at the map again, it ran in a straight line. So I've got a feeling where the fence line is at the back there. The miniature railway ran right across the back up here. So that was the original route through the park. Whereas today they'd send you this way down towards the lake. Now where that straight line is, I am not sure, but I will hopefully find it in a minute. I've just checked the old maps and there is a large rectangular shaped building right there on the edge of the lake. And it shows the miniature railway behind it, which is roughly where we are now. We are now at the back of what is, or what was the Blue Lagoon, but it must have been somewhere here at this top section. Now there's a lot of old trees up here, so I'm trying to look for maybe a clear path through and also somewhere that's pretty flat. And I've just spotted a sign in here. Maybe, ah, this might be the track bed here. Yes, this could well be it. I can get through the brambles. This could be the track bed here. And there's also a lamppost sticking out of the trees right here. Yeah, this could be the old track bed. So let's head out here and see if we can pick it up. What do you spot as soon as you look there, coming out of those trees where I just was? A nice level section of land right there. Normally a dead giveaway. Let's walk on it. I'm pretty confident this is the track bed here. And that's where I was stood earlier. Behind there. You can see that right here. Things are normally even many years later, still marked out on the floor. There was also another station down here for the miniature railway, somewhere along this section, and it was labeled as Woodview Station. Again, I'm not confident we're gonna find anything remaining of that, but it's nice to know there was another one over this side. And then it entered a railway tunnel further down. And again, I'm not confident there's anything remaining of that, but we'll find out when we get further down. So if this was the track bed, as I believe it is, then right about where those picnic benches are would have been the railway tunnel. Now, as you can see, it's very flat around here. There's no water features. There's nothing passing over. So why they would have needed a railway tunnel, I have no idea. But I do maybe think it was built purely for decoration. But it would have been roughly around here where we are now. And again, you can still see the line through these trees here that the track followed. And on the left here, where these trees are, would have been the original boundary, boundary fence. And then before we hit the main road down there, 
the track bent right across the front of the lake down there. We've reached the edge of the main road, as you can hear now, which runs down the front side of the park. And right here is where the railway would have bent, probably again where the footpath is there, right in front of us and crossed over the dam wall down there. And like I said, it was on a viaduct raised above the water. So I'm guessing this section of pathway here was the original trap bed for the miniature railway. Not all of it, just a section of it here. So as, as we know, the railway came from that direction through them trees there. So probably towards us and use this curve here. And it would be about the right height as well because the lake, like I said, a lot of it's filled in down here. The lake would have been right up to the edge here and up to this wall maybe. Now there is this small underpass today which heads underneath the main road and the boundary wall here. But I do believe if I look at this old picture that I've got in my hand, I can see this bridge on there and it shows the viaduct for the railway right in front of it. Either right here where the footpath is as we walk over it today or maybe just a bit further in front. But it was a wooden viaduct looking at the picture. And I'm sure there would be some concrete stanchions somewhere but as for the bridge you ain't going to see anything of that. Well there you go, we've walked around the whole site of Golden Acre Park and I hope that I've managed to help you understand what it used to look like. But thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next week in the next video. Bye! Oh.